Hey now, what is up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and next year I look to the future of next year when it comes to movies. 2018 is gonna be amazing, hopefully. Hopefully it's gonna be amazing. I see this list and I'm like, this is gonna be great. My top 10 most anticipated films of next year. Let's talk about my honorable mentions really quick. Pacific Rim Uprising. I'm not the biggest fan of the first Pacific Rim. I just thought it was okay, honestly. I love the action and the spectacle of it. I just thought the writing was a bit weak. So hopefully we, we've changed gears. We have a new director. We'll see if they can liven it up and freshen it up a little bit. The trailers look decent. The Predator. Written and directed, I think, by Shane Black. That's something that I'm curious about. And I love the original Predator movie. I think that creature is so fascinating. If they can bring him back to those roots of scary and tactical and how intelligent he was, how unstoppable he was, this movie could kick ass. Tomb Raider, something that I thought the trailer looked interesting. And I really liked this actress that they have to play the new Laura Croft. Hopefully it pans out. Let's see if it's better than the Angelina Jolie one. And Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. I originally had this on my list until I saw the trailer that just came out and I thought, okay, this doesn't look as promising or as interesting as I thought it could be. So I bumped it completely off. I bumped it off the list. But let's go to the list now. Number 10, I bumped this up. In place of Jurassic World. Now number 10 is X-Men the Dark Phoenix. And and this is a do-over from X-Men The Last Stand, X-Men 3, which I still hate. It's my most hated X-Men film of the series. It's so bad. And the fact that they're almost giving me an apology, almost saying, hey, we know, we screwed up. Here you go. Here's the Dark Phoenix story. Here's it hopefully told better. And now you see the Entertainment Weekly photos and the articles and them talking about it. It does make me more interested. It does give me more hope. They recognize the flaws of even the last movie, Apocalypse. And they're saying, we're going to fix that. Awesome. Number nine, Mission Impossible 6. I know nothing about this movie. I mean, I know Henry Cavill's in it as a villain, and that's why he's wearing the mustache, and that's why Justice League had its issues that it had with the reshoots. But other than that, I don't know what's going on here, and I don't need to know because it's Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. You know he's going to damn near kill himself. I'm pretty sure he almost has doing the stunts himself, and you know it's going to be great action, great spectacle, and the writing, the story has held up as well. Number eight, another X-Men movie, X-Men New Mutants, because this is something different. This is something new. This is a horror movie with the X-Men franchise, and that's awesome. That's interesting. You see that trailer, and it looks scary, and it looks like it's, you know, they're taking people, kids with powers, and treating them like the freaks, or like they're monsters, and seeing them locked up in the hospital, and like, what's going to happen with that? How far are they going to take this? At number seven, Aquaman. I wish I had it even higher, because this is James Wan, a horror icon at this point for directing, and he's going to bring those sensibilities to it. I believe we're going to have great moments underwater and how that's going to look. Jason Momoa was one of the best things about Justice League. Just that personality and that funness to him. So seeing him and the, the backstory, the lore that comes with Atlantis and Mira and just seeing all of that come together. I can't wait to see what they do with it. Hopefully those damn producers leave Mr. Wan alone and let him do what he needs to do to tell a good standalone story. Number six, Ant-Man and the Wasp. It's funny when I see how many people complain about the Wasp not doing anything in the first Ant-Man movie, but I like the fact that Marvel's saying, hey guys, don't worry. The next movie, she's not only getting a big part, her name is in the title. This is gonna be the both of them partnering up. Paul Rudd, as Scott Lang, he's hilarious and he's fun to watch. And then seeing Evergen Lily as this character, like they're gonna kick ass. Michael Douglas is back. Lawrence Fishburne's gonna be in the movie. Marvel has not disappointed me in a long time. Number five, The Incredibles 2. I'm a late bloomer when it comes to The Incredibles. I just watched the first movie just a few months ago, but I loved it. I did, I can't believe it took me so long, but I did, I loved it. And now, 
it's been how many years since that like the big gap in between sequels luckily for me it didn't doesn't seem like that long but still this has has taken so long hopefully it's because of the time effort and care the quality that's going to be put into it number four venom we are venom this is a film that could go completely south it could because it's not really connected to the Marvel Cinematic Universe as far as we know. I don't know if Spider-Man, Tom Holland is going to be in this movie, but it doesn't seem like he will. The only thing that pulls this together, because otherwise I should be pissed that they're making this movie standalone and not having him as a villain first and they're just sort of rushing this because he's a popular character and Sony could be fucking this all up. But it's Tom Hardy. It's Tom Hardy playing Eddie Brock, him either reading the script or seeing the treatment, finding out about this character and being as interested as he is. Also, Michelle Williams. She too is somebody that doesn't do blockbuster movies, not in a real while. So her being wanting to be in it, Riz Ahmed, we don't even know if Carnage is going to be the villain. I mean, we all assume it. And if it is, a part of me is going to say, yeah, it sucks to not have this go the way it should, where Venom's a villain first and then grows to be an anti-hero. But hopefully, if they get it right, then I'll say to myself, well, at least we get a cool, badass Venom. If he looks cool, if the CGI looks good, if he looks big. Number three, Black Panther. Black Panther, that trailer, I just saw the trailer in theaters today and it's like this looks gorgeous wakanda looks amazing the special effects the cgi how does marvel cgi look so much better than like anybody else's cgi it looks so real it looks flawless and chadwick boseman as this character t'challa it's something that honestly for years being a kid and seeing black panther and going like oh he's cool but you just you never think that they're going to do a movie with him and that they're going to make him stand apart from anything else and have him front and center, have him be a king. The cast, all these black quality actors. Finally, number two is Deadpool 2. As much as I love the Deadpool character, even before this movie and how funny I found him and how different he was compared to any other X-Men character, and he started off as a villain and then grew in popularity, and Ryan Reynolds playing him. Even in X-Men Origins Wolverine, he played him great until they messed them all up. But as great as that first Deadpool movie was, it's like you watch that teaser trailer of him pretending to be Bob Ross and painting it. It just, it made me laugh so hard in a teaser trailer. And they virtually almost showed none of the movie. They showed quick clips and all oh, that looked cool. But it's that humor, it's that originality. It's that, that makes it stand apart. It makes me go, oh yeah, this is what we have to look forward to. But number one, obviously my most anticipated movie of 2018 it is Avengers Infinity War, and it's not just because it's all of these characters coming together after 10 years of build-up, because that is awesome. And that's the work that you need to put in to make us care, to make us want to shell out the money that we do shell out for Marvel. You're not just throwing a bunch of people in, introducing them, but saying, oh no, come watch our movie. No, you took the time, the care, and the effort, and you built this mythology. You have all of us invested. But not just that, you show me that trailer, and holy hell, it's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Between the moments that we see, between Thanos being a badass and being scary, between seeing Spider-Man and the Guardians of the Galaxy and Iron Man and, and Cap with the beard and... And Wakanda and the army and Vision almost dying, probably dying, and the the stones. Holy crap! This there's gonna be so much going on in this film. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to emotionally process everything that I'm gonna see on that day in the theater on screen. I'm almost already in shock and awe just from thinking about it. This is gonna be a great year for movies and one of the best years in comic book movies. Obviously, it's a lot of that in my list. So guys, let me know in the comments below what's your most anticipated list of 2018. Is it similar movies? Do you have them at different spots? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later.